بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما زلنا مكملين روبين سوسايتي فاسكو سيرجي جايد لاينز فور ذا مانجمنت اوف اكيوت لمب اسكيميا اند توداي ويل توك اباوت تو سب تايبس اوف اكيوت لمب اسكيميا ويز سبيشال كونسيدريشنز اند ذا فيرست توبيك ويل توك اباوت از اكيوت اورتيك اوكلوجن ويز بايلاترال لور لمب اسكيميا اند اكيوت ابر لمب اسكيميا اند از ريجارد ذا اكيوت اورتيك اوكلوجن ويز بايلاترال لور لمب اسكيميا ويل توك اباوت ايتيولوجي اند دايجنوزيز And what about the treatment and the effect of increased use of endovascular aneurysm uh, repair? As regards the etiology and diagnosis, um, actually acute aortic occlusion is immediately life-threatening condition. Rather than being a limb-threatening, it is a major life-threatening condition and it can be caused by a large saddle emboli from the heart, usually uh, a complication of acute myocardial infarction or by a thrombosis of an atherosclerotic or aneurysmal aorta or uh, both common iliac arteries. Sometimes secondary to thrombophilia or a low cardiac output and when they happen by this by thrombophilia or a low cardiac output or even by uh, other etiologies it carries a very high uh, mortality. Or an acute occlusion of a previously inserted graft or a stent graft if the patient has done uh, EVAR before. The condition remains actually a true challenge, even for an experienced clinician. Aortic dissection may result in acute aortic occlusion, most often as a result of compression of the true lumen. Diagnosis of uh, acute aortic occlusion is sometimes difficult, in particular when the patient presents with bilateral lower limb paralysis, so the etiology may be thought as a neurological one, So if the patient complains of a bilateral uh, paralysis, this should be included um, immediately in your differential uh, diagnosis. And delay in diagnosis of acute aortic occlusion actually is associated with a poor outcome. And about the treatment, one of the explanations for why treatment is not always successful and why it is associated with a very high mortality even if performed in a timely way, is that the ischemia reperfusion injury is so massive in comparison to the lower limb uh, affected by acute limb uh, ischemia. Acute aortic occlusion is a more threat to the life than to limb. And overall, within 30 days, amputation risk was 9% in one of the studies and mortality was 20%. So, It is a major threat to life rather than the limb, but results improved over time according to this study. Mortality decreased from 25 to 15%, and this improvement is due to improvement in how to manage the ischemia reperfusion injury. The decision making should take into account the etiology and the comorbidities and the resources and experience and is based on the standard vascular uh, surgical uh, principles. And uh, what about the effect of increased use of endovascular aneurysm repair? The increased use of endovascular aneurysm repair has resulted in increased risk of aortic occlusion due to stent graft thrombosis. The EVAR1 trial actually reported a three to four times higher rate of graft-related complications after endovascular aneurysm repair compared with an open aortic surgery. And the newer generations of stent graft may be more flexible and more kink resistant limbs, which may reduce the incidence of EVAR graft limb uh, occlusion. And about the recommendations for the acute aortic uh, occlusion for patients with acute limb ischemia secondary to acute aortic occlusion, it is recommended that revascularization is performed urgently. For patients who have undergone revascularization for acute limb ischemia secondary to acute aortic occlusion, close collaboration is recommended with anesthetists and intensivists to reduce the complication of ischemia reperfusion uh, injury. And about our second topic, we'll talk about diagnosis and treatment of acute upper limb ischemia. What are the diagnostic strategies and uh, the surgical decision making open surgery or endovascular surgery and compartment syndrome and fasciotomy of the upper limb? In the diagnostic strategy, we need to know that acute uh, upper limb ischemia is not as common as acute lower limb ischemia. And 
there are a number of differences between the upper limb acute ischemia and the lower limb acute ischemia. The ischemia is more likely to be embolic in the upper limb and it is less likely to be limb threatening. It is also less likely to be immediately life threatening than lower limb ischemia because ischemia reperfusion injury is milder than that of the uh, lower limb uh, ischemia. Although late mortality rates are high owing to the underlying disease and comorbidities in these patients. The tissue effects of ischemia are similar to the lower limb, but actually management and treatment cannot be evidence-based as there are no randomized controlled trials and few large cohort studies of upper limb acute ischemia. But there are a number of core principles in management of upper limb ischemia that patients should be treated by a vascular surgeons with uh, expertise in units where uh, the both the full range of vascular surger, surgery can be offered either open or endovascular therapeutic options. And as regard the initial management, it is the same as the lower limb ischemia by systemic anticoagulation, intravenous fluids, oxygen, and medical uh, optimization as management of the atrial fibrillation. Cardiac embolism is actually the most common cause of acute upper limb ischemia and thrombosis is less often etiology, 17% in a large uh, UK cohort. There are a number of other rare causes as distal thrombosis due to thrombophilia and um, dissection can cause also an acute upper limb ischemia or a complication of a thoracic outlet syndrome arthritis, stenosis secondary to deradiation treatment, and subclavian uh, aneurysm, and as we said, the dissection. What about the diagnostic strategy? As in the acute lower limb ischemia, the diagnosis of upper limb ischemia is clinical, and the level of occlusion can be determined by palpation of pulses, and confirmation is by arterial imaging with duplex ultrasound or CT angiography. Arterial imaging may be not necessary before intervention for every patient with acute upper limb ischemia. And this is a very uh, important point to um, ask about and to think about which patient that requires imaging and in which patient imaging is mandatory. If the patient has a typical cardiac embolus from an AF or a shared short history, and the normal arterial pulses elsewhere, it may be reasonable actually to proceed to treatment immediately if the limb is immediately threatened and if the axillary artery pulse in the upper arm is easily palpable. I mean, there is an inflow for the brachial uh, embolectomy. So, in the case that you have an obvious etiology with a palpable uh, axillary artery pulse in the upper arm, you can proceed immediately to the uh, embolectomy. But in other cases, if the ischemia is not typically embolic, I mean in young patient with thoracic outlet syndrome or a cervical rib is suspected or a thrombosis associated with the radiotherapy, subclavian aneurysm, or if there is a suspicion of aortic dissection or axillary pulse is not palpable, in all of these circumstances, actually imaging of the proximal upper limb vessels is mandatory before treatment. And in most cases, it is preferably done by a CT angiography. Blind embolectomy in this situation may not improve the blood flow to the hand and may simply make the ischemia even worse. If the artery is patent, it is important to, be, to perform an elevation test with duplex ultrasound or digital subtraction and geography to verify a thoracic outlet syndrome mechanism if present. The surgical decision making to either do it an open surgical or an endovascular, some patients with upper limb ischemia, or either to do it with an anticoagulation only. So this um, part of the guidelines to discuss about this uh, options or these options. Some patients with upper limb ischemia appear to have no immediate threat to their limb, no motor or sensory loss, no muscle tenderness, and audible arterial signals addressed on Doppler, I mean rather for the grade 2A. 
and conservative treatment with anticoagulation alone may be appropriate in this type of patients, provided that the risk is that also the limb may remain viable and the patient may suffer from forearm claudication, which may be disabling for this patient and may affect his quality of life. So, as for the lower limb ischemia, yeah, there should be a discussion about options and the options should be individualized to the risk and benefit for each patient. So factors that may be taken into account uh, are whether the dominant hand is affected, the age and condition of the patient, the patient's occupation, and the severity of ischemia. And if the decision made to treat the upper limb ischemia conservatively with anticoagulation alone, the arm should be reviewed regularly over the next few days to ensure it does not deteriorate. Anticoagulation has been suggested as the primary therapy, but a review of studies suggested that poor functional outcomes were reported more often after a conservative approach. So if you decided to treat an upper limb acute ischemia with anticoagulation alone, you have to review this limb over the next few days to ensure it does not deteriorate. And you have to discuss with the patient that he may experience a forearm claudication over the time. What about the open surgery? Most patients with upper limb ischemia are treated surgically by brachial embolectomy. Bypass surgery is seldom required uh, acutely. The default should uh, be surgery under local anesthesia, but as we said in the lower limb ischemia, with anesthetists present in the room, and with the option for intravenous sedation and resuscitation if required. The ischemia reperfusion injury is uh, milder than that of the lower limb, but an anesthetist must be present in the OT uh, at the embolectomy time. Controversies about the surgical options actually include which is incision to use in the skin, whether the brachial uh, bifurcation needs a formal dissection, and whether both forearm arteries actually need a reopening or no, transverse or longitudinal arteriotomy in the brachial artery, what size of the Fogarty catheter and the method of arterial repair. And all of these um, uh, topics actually are controversies in management of, in the surgical management of acute upper limb ischemia. What about the endovascular surgery? Endovascular treatments such as uh, percutaneous thrombectomy or aspiration thrombectomy or catheter directed thrombolysis have been used for the acute uh, upper limb ischemia but only case report exists to describe their benefits and complications rather than a large number of the studies or randomized controlled trials. Catheter directed thrombolysis through a femoral approach with a catheter in the aortic arch actually is associated with the risk of cranial vessel embolism, but it can also be performed with a brachial approach minimizing this risk. Clots may also detach and pass cranially from the proximal end of the occlusion, a phenomenon which is called a whirlpool uh, embolism. Whirlpool embolism يعني الدوامة اللي بتحصل عند البروكسيمال uh, بروكسيمال لي السايت اوف اوكلوجن الدوامة دي اللي هو التربلانت فلو اللي بيحصل لي البلاد ممكن يتاتش ثروم بس دي وبفعل التربلانت فلو ده يعمل كرينيال uh, امبولايزيشن Primary distal thrombosis of the hand or residual distal ischemia after embolectomy may benefit from catheter directed or intravenous prostaglandin therapy so as we said in the management of the lower limb ischemia, you have to be dynamic in your management. It is uh, surgical in, in most of the cases, but endovascular options are available and to change your mind between these two options is, is also uh, feasible according to the case you are dealing with. What about the compartment syndrome and fasciotomy? After successful perfusion of the upper limb, compartment syndrome is a rare complication. And as we said before, this is due to the milder ischemia reperfusion injury in the upper limb in comparison to the lower limb. However, if it occurs, it can still result in a long-term damage by contracture or even limb loss.
Prophylactic fasciotomy is seldom indicated, but if the arm has been ischemic for many hours and swells considerably after successful embolectomy, fasciotomy is actually indicated. If it is indicated, volar fasciotomy is suggested, but concurrent dorsal fasciotomy is also recommended by some authors. And as we can see in this uh, photo, this is the site of incision in both the volar fasciotomy and the dorsal fasciotomy to decompress the compartments of the uh, forearm. What about the recommendations for patients with acute ischemia of the upper limb? Preoperative imaging is recommended unless obvious etiology, which is embolic occlusion, uh, is obvious and the limb is immediately threatened and axillary or proximal brachial pulses are uh, palpable. For patients with acute ischemia of the upper limb, conservative treatment with anticoagulation alone is not recommended if the arm is threatened or if limb function is important to quality of life of the patient.